A massive thank you to Rugby, Thomas, Carlo, Ruben and Blake for subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to rank 10 of season 6 of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yes, today we're here back for our home Grand Prix, back in Silverstone once again. But of course, if you missed out on the last video from the Austrian Grand Prix that went live a few days ago, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. As always though, a massive, massive thank Thank you to all of you guys as well for the continued support. We're now really, really close to 40,000 subscribers. We've smashed through 39k. You know, if you're not already, please do get yourself subscribed as well, of course, for more Formula 1 content. And yeah, it's it's just mind-blowing at the moment. The, the support you guys are giving me throughout the entirety of F1 2021 and the fact that even still now uh, we're gaining, you know, we're, we're pushing up towards, you know, 50k is looking like a real possibility in the near future as well there. But... Yeah, that little intro out of the way, though. Let's have a look at the championship standings. The gap at the top down to just seven points between myself and Max Verstappen there after a woeful weekend last time out for myself and Pierre. Uh, Red Bull as well. Two points behind us in the Constructors' Championship as there's quite a good championship battle going on and then quite a good battle between the number twos of Perez and Pierre Gasly as well there. But of course, this is the venue where Sergio Perez took his one race victory last season. Going to be interesting to see whether he can replicate that again this weekend. We're starting to struggle a little bit more on a couple of the components, but I think we should be able to make it through this weekend at the very least. Let's head in then here to Silverstone. Right, well, here we are then. Free practice from the British Grand Prix and looking like it's going to be quite a difficult weekend based on the weather alone there. Friday and Saturday might be some pretty clear and dry running for the most part. Sunday, however, the, the schedule is just all rain all day long. So we'll have to wait and see as to how this weekend goes there. But track climatization lap as we ran through the end of the lap. Just two green scores up to now. So this one should be the purple. Always just gives you that little bit of extra confidence as you head into a Grand Prix weekend. There is one more green score for the road. That's going to be a nice purple That's score fantastic. though. So we seem to be gaining a lot of time down the straightaways there as we head down towards the end of the hangar straight. About three tenths we pulled on the Delta. And I mean, Silverstone yeah, is one of the highest average speed circuits on the F1 calendar still as we ran through the final couple of corners. Yeah, easily going to be another purple score. Let's get into qualifying then and see where we're going to put this thing. Formula 1 is finally back in 2022 and now you can rep your favourite teams. Of course, using the F1 store, every team now has merch lineups available. Whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like. But as the sun beats down on the Silverstone circuit, qualifying day then here for the British Grand Prix. Like I said, we're expecting a lot of rain tomorrow. So I'm actually running a little bit high downforce this weekend just to try and see whether it will give us a little bit of a helping hand in the race. You know, we've got to try and think bigger picture at this stage of the year rather than just trying to stick the car as high up the grid as possible. So yeah, we might lose a little bit top end speed here. But hopefully, yeah, we'll just have that little bit more confidence in the race come Sunday. But again, as always, first lap Q2, medium tyres. Let's just try and get a good representative in. Seems like Lando Norris actually went fastest in Q1 in his Alpha Tauri. That thing is not slow. Daniel Ricciardo set new fastest lap time at the moment, down in towards the mid-123s, which is where we were expecting the fastest cars to be. Can't wait for Verstappen. I was about to say to set a 22 there, and he just misses out on a 23 flat. So Red Bull now just starting to reveal a bit more of their pace that they've got in the car this weekend. But rounding through the final corner, we're going to set a low 24. Not enough to get through into Q3, I can't imagine, but a good lap on mediums. Right, second run then. We're going to go out on the set of softs we used in Q1. Um, yeah, of course, if it is a wet start, though, we're not going to have to worry about mandatory tyres or anything like that. Remaining. So we may as well just keep burning up sets in qualifying. There is just so much history around this Silverstone Grand Prix circuit there. It's now four and a half tenths up. As we head back down in towards Sector 3, this should nestle us nicely back inside the top 10 once more. 
But remember, this is still on the old set of tyres there. Tyres now just starting to give up, though, as we head down in towards the final few corners of the lap. They see just under steering a little bit. It's going to compromise our run out of the final corner, but we still find time. 23-7. Slots us back into P7 there as Lance Stroll doing a 27... Uh, sorry, a 23-7 or better on mediums. That Merc is not slow either. Right, just going to go out for one last ditch attempt, though, at the end of Q2. You know, sat in P7, a little bit perilous at the moment, a bit close to the drop zone. Of course, we got the tyres, no need to risk anything at the moment. Let's let's try and get a fast lap in, maybe down in towards sort of the mid to low 23s. Oh, losing a little bit of time through the old Turn 1, but as we head back through Maggots and Beckett's once more. Oh, no, getting way out of shape on the way in. That's going to compromise us on the exit. However, I think we've just about done enough, actually. To make it through into Q3 still. Only losing the one place to Yuki, uh, to Charles Leclerc there. Actually, the order's all getting a bit mixed up. People going faster, people going slower there. I've never understood how this quite works on F1 2021. Lance Stroll is now somehow behind us in qualifying late on in the day. But round in the final corner, we are going to find fractions of a second. But it's not going to make much difference. And there we go then, having a look at the results at the end of Q2. Verstappen fastest ahead of Lando Norris there. And yeah, look at that. The Alpha Tauri getting between the two Red Bulls at the front. Stroll on mediums. Like I said, don't think that's going to make much difference come race day. But less than a tenth behind Pierre. I reckon we could get close to that time set by Sergio Perez. But the lap would have to be perfect. We've got to remember as well, of course, not only are we running a bit higher downforce. But this engine is certainly not in the best nick either. Getting a little bit worried now, to be honest, as it's sat over 70%. And maybe another entire Grand Prix is just going to push it a little bit too far. But I think we have to push the envelope at this stage of the year with performance. You know, like I said, this race, if it is wet, is not going to take much out of the engine. But, yeah, we're just... I mean, we ran into reliability issues, funnily enough, here last season. Car smoking away when we got towards the finish line. And maybe we're going to see deja vu of that. But, yeah, I think... It's a risk we have to take at this stage of the campaign if we want to try and stick with Verstappen because that Red Bull is looking fast as Sonoda immediately back down into the 23s. That should be expected by Q3. Sergio Perez sets a 23-4 at the moment. We are about three tenths up on our teammate Gasly who clearly hasn't set a particularly good first lap in Q3. Breaking down though at the 50 metre board. Tip it in at the end of the hangar straight there. This Silverstone is so, so iconic. I really have grown to love this track in more recent years. It was never one I was a particularly big fan of to drive on the older F1 games. But at the final corner, 23-7 again. Not brilliant, but not bad either, as Stroll now sets a 23-2. So that Merc is, yeah, very, very fast. Right, about to start our last lap then of qualifying here for the British Grand Prix. Let's try and give the home crowd something to smile about as we roll on the throttle at the final corner. And let's see how much higher we can put this thing up the order there. Currently sat in P7. There is definitely a little bit more time to find. Completely pinned through Turn 1. Try to avoid the bumps on the inside. Break just at the start of the curbing into the loop. Try and don't let the nose wash out too much. So you can launch yourself on corner exit there. Using the curb on the exit there. Little wiggle from the back end as we put well over a 1,000 horsepower through those rear tyres there. Down the Wellington straight though. Looking for the 50 metre board. Slam on the anchors, tip it in there, trying to take a little bit of a later apex this time round as it can launch us through the next corner there. Again, fourth gear on the exit, roll on the throttle, get right up to the sand trap though on the exit. And now a tenth and a half up as we head back down the old start finish straight here. Tip it in, of course, where we saw that moment between Hamilton and Verstappen last year. They're just a blend of the throttle as the back end likes to lose grip there. But now in towards Maggot and Beckett's eighth gear through the first, down into seventh. For the second there, sixth, and then we're going to leave it in sixth on the exit this time around. That's the first time this session I've done that, and you can see it's just carried that little bit extra as we head down the back straightaway here. Down the hangar straight to go, 50 meter board, like I said, tip it in, back into sixth gear there on the exit as well as you try and make the track as wide as possible. Final chicane, got to make sure we get this nailed. Tap the curbs on the way in there, it's going to bounce the car around though. We're not going to get the best run on corner exit. We are going to find the time there, and it is going to be a 23-4. Where has that left us on the grid for the British Grand Prix? I didn't quite catch it. And with qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. Verstappen, Stroll and Sergio Perez. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race.
Well, there we go. Then qualifying done for the British Grand Prix. And Max Verstappen, the Dutchman, is on pole there. Looking pretty formidable as we get ready for the weekend. But that was pretty much the best lap I could have hoped for in that session. Maybe if we just found a tiny bit extra, we could have got up to Sergio Perez there. But, yeah, out qualifying Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris there, as well as Valtteri Bottas, is absolutely critical. Let's get it then here at the British Grand Prix. Great Britain then, one of only two countries to have held a Grand Prix in every single year of the Formula One World Championship. And the circuit extends that record further for today's Grand Prix. Silverstone circuit then, it's 3.6 miles long and has a total of 18 corners. And of course, is no stranger to the rain. There won't be any DRS available in these conditions, but the Wellington and Hangar Straits are still good opportunities to tuck into the slipstream and make a pass. It's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today, although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. Anthony Davidson, could be a wet one today. Great to have you with us. What are your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? Whereas well, a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions. Standing water, tyre temperature and visibility. And judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tyres kick up. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Lance Stroll in P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Perez, Mr. Monaco, Charles Leclerc and Norris, Bottas, Sonoda, Gasly and Daniel Ricciardo, Sainz, Joe, Jack Aitken and Lundgaard, Russell, Eilert, Nicholas Latifi and Esteban Ocon, Giovinazzi, Mazepin, Mick Schumacher and Robert Schwartzman. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. OK, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. Wrong, Jeff. Today, we risk it all down in towards Term 1 to make sure we win this one. But here we are then, trackside for the British Grand Prix. And yeah, looking like it's just going to be a rather damp and soggy race here today. Like I said, though, Verstappen on the pole. Not quite sure, really, in, what, Season 6 of this career mode, 2026. Is 29, I want to say, year old Max Verstappen really a young superstar still at that point in Formula 1? I'm, I'm not so sure about that one. But... Maybe the no-stop might just be doable today as well. They're looking at the tyre wear as the Grand Prix unfolds. Could be close, actually, if we try and look after the rubber early on in the race. But, of course, track conditions could change as well. Plenty left to be decided in this one here today. But what we do know is we need to get a good start here. Let's dive in, then, here to the British Grand Prix. And I definitely need to try and concentrate on this launch. Five red lights. So there we go. Really, really trying to concentrate. Don't want to light at the rears. Somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a lot of power. And I'm sorry, I think that was Valtteri Bottas. Uh, sorry, Lando Norris even, who tried to send it down the inside in towards Turn 1. Into a gap that was never, ever going to open up there. Really, yeah, I think you guys could tell there just how much I was trying to concentrate off the start. Did lose two places to Charles Leclerc. And Valtteri Bottas there. But yeah, like I said, Lando Norris is going into a gap that was never really going to exist. Down in towards the first corner there. Especially when we were getting sandwiched by Bottas on the outside as well. So not really... You know, I don't feel too guilty about that one there at the start of the GP. As Bottas already trying to kick the back end out ever so slightly. But yeah, often nil, this car has been pretty good in the wet conditions around certain venues. There is double downshift through the old Term 1. So maybe today, you know, if we try and get the tyres into good sort of good heat cycle, everything like that, we can try and keep this thing close to the front runners there. You know, rain can often be a great equaliser of car performance as well. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to hope I'm one of the better F1 drivers on this grid. You know, as reigning world champion now, feels, feels good to say that still on F1 2021. But yeah, Verstappen just trying to break away 
at the start of this one, but Lance Stroll, he's no slouch in the wet conditions either there. He might be able to give uh, Verstappen a run for his money and maybe take Mercedes' first race victory since season four, I want to say, of this career mode. But yeah, Verstappen leads the way, though, at the end of that one. And to be honest, yeah, these conditions not as bad as I'd originally worried they could be. We're accumulating some wear on the MGUK. To manage this, we'll need to lower our ERS deployment mode. That's not what we want to hear early on. Like I said, I think this weekend we're going to get very, very close on that couple of engine components there, but didn't really want to take penalties here at Silverstone because normally it's a track where we haven't gone too well on F1 2021. Their big kick from the rear end there is, yeah, funnily enough, putting a 1,000 horsepower down in the wet is not particularly easy without traction control. Here comes Yuki Tsunoda. They're trying to get a run out down the back straight. We'll try and keep the nose on the inside there and we'll just slam the door in at the young Japanese driver's face on the exit. But yeah, under a lot of pressure early on, seems like we're pretty good up towards the old turn one and then the AI just so much better in the second half of the lap. Okay, we have an issue with the control electronics box. That's going to do additional damage to all other power unit components. Well, this just early on gets better and better then, so um, I might have taken the gamble a bit too far here. Now it looks like the control electronics box is struggling, and that is just going to shred other pieces of the engine as well there. What's the wear up to? That control electronics, yeah, is going up by about a percent a lap. We've got 24% left in it with 23 laps to go. Oh, Matt, what have you done? Purple final sector, as we're now really trying to apply some pressure to Valtteri Bottas here in this Grand Prix. Need to start trying to make moves early on. It's already six laps in and kind of just have been watching the McLaren there as you can just see how hard we're pushing into the loop, snagging the brakes there as we try and scrub off speed. But yeah, it's just very, very difficult when you get right underneath the car in front of you. You just start losing all the downforce. It's so Verstappen now, just starting to set more and more fastest laps then in this Grand Prix. We're not too far away as we go again purple through the final sector. But just, yeah, need to try and make a move work on Bottas at the moment. But just through some of the higher speed stuff, the AI have just got supreme confidence because they can hit the same lines every single time. I, however, cannot. It's actually this time around, we're a little bit closer out of the loop. Try and put the power down out onto the Wellington straight. It's not really here, though. I'm looking to try and make a move. It's actually out onto the old start finish straight there. Bottas every time. It's just kicking out the back end ever so slightly there as he tries to put the throttle down. So if we try and go wide on the way in and get really nicely on the throttle. That that was what I was trying to do there. That wasn't quite what happened, but at least now I've got the idea. We we almost completely threw it away, however. Oh, there we go. Verstappen, another new fastest lap of the day. Verstappen has just put up the fastest lap of the race so far. Thanks for that, Jeff. We go within two tenths, though, so definitely when we get the laps hooked up, we have still got a lot of pace in the car, but if we just need to, again, now, try and stick close behind Bottas once more through this first part of the lap there. Really try and get a good run out onto the Wellington Street once again. Oh, <laughs> it's so difficult. Try and put the throttle down there. We actually use a bit too much of the exit curb. I pick up a warning there on the exit. I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that one. It's just super difficult to judge in the dirty air. But can we do what I aimed to do a couple of laps ago? Let's just see this time round whether Bottas will kick out the back end again. Yes, he will. There gets caught out on the curbs. You can just see. Then it's a bit more of a drag race. But that McLaren has just got so much torque, so much pickup. By the time we get back in towards the old turn one. We've got nothing there we can do against him as we pick up a second warning of the lap. Now we've got to be super, super careful with track limits. Yeah, Bottas is really strong right where he needs to be. And I'm starting to get a bit frustrated by it. In terms of wear, though, tyres not wearing at all. So we can definitely go to the end on those. But control electronics, yeah, I think if my calculations are correct, is going to be on 98, 99%. Oh, ha, <laughs> ha. By the end of this so we're gonna have to try and play strategy on this one and hope that the ai can't make up much on the delta when they stop again though we're close to bottas as we head through the start of sector two really come on matt come on 
again, we can just get that run on the exit, and I don't know where the McLaren is finding the torque just to then still pull level with us. I thought this Ferrari power unit was good in the back of this thing, but look at that drive from Valtteri Bottas. He must have like a second throttle pedal or something. A new strategy is available on the MFD. Team recommending a new strap. What are they saying? Lap 15? No, I think we'll Copy. stick with lap 19, but really, yeah. No intention of stopping today. Tyres can definitely make it. I don't even think it's going to be particularly badly worn either. Oh, let's look at that. Bottas again struggles to put the power down out of the loop. This time around, we might be just that little bit closer to the flying fin. Is Bottas really one of the flying fins? I'm, I'm not convinced. He is on his day. Don't get me wrong, but just not often enough, I think, in the world of Formula One. Saw a little bit of contact that time round with the McLaren man. And I think there, look at that again. Again. What what am I meant to do? We just can't seem to get the drive in the higher end stuff. Bottas always just has enough. And then, of course, yeah, the AI are a wee bit OP through the old Term 1. I think that was the best line I'd ever had through there. There we go. Another new fast slap coming in from Verstappen. So track is definitely getting ever so slightly better. Certainly not a huge amount as we PB as well. Yeah, this first half of the lap is definitely going to be the only opportunity I'm going to get to try and move past Valtteri. But I think soon enough we're going to see the AI come in for their one and hopefully only pit stop of the day. Short shift over to fourth lap. Come on. I mean, it's not working for me, but I keep trying it. <laughs> oh, what else can I do but laugh at the moment? Just the way that McLaren picks up. I hope these sort of balancing things get fixed on F1 2022, because it's just a little bit odd, isn't it? You know, the fact every time I get such a better drive there, we know we've got a much faster car than McLaren as well. You know, part of it is down due to the knackered engine we've got still in the back of this wagon. 20 more minutes of light rain there, but you can see what is the damage up to. 86% uh, with 13 laps to go. It's still going to be super, super close on the control electronics. Been awarded a time penalty for that last incident. And I guess my track limits there has just caught us out as we ran ever so slightly wide out on the exit in the final sector. As everyone else dives into the pits now, not only are we going to try and defend from the Sappen, I try and defend with a three second lead to the end of this one. It's just Perez and myself that have stayed out here. We've got to hope, yeah, the tyre drop off isn't particularly bad. So are we now about to see Checo Perez and Yuki Sonoda just behind me into the pit lane at the end of this lap? We should theoretically. There goes Sergio. So we try not to pick up another warning for track limits. There is Sonoda going to dive it in as well. Yes, the Mercedes man has. So we are now going to be into the lead of the British Grand Prix here with 12 laps to go. Control Electronics sat it now. Look at that, it's ticking over as we cross the line. So it might well be that we hit it as we cross the line here yeah, at Silverstone. Yeah, Gasly also into the pit lane. But normally, I think... Well, it's only ever happened to me once on F1 2021. I want to say it was back in Season 1. Might have been Season 2 of this career mode at the Austrian Grand Prix. We did actually have a component reach 100%. It gave us about half a lap, and then it went puff, and we could not do anything more with the car. So this is a huge gamble from us in this British Grand Prix, but we've just got to try and get to the end. We've got 17 seconds, or effectively 14 seconds, over Max Verstappen. He will be quicker to the end, but surely not a second a lap. The pace drop-off won't be that bad. Look at that, we're still setting new PBs in the Grand Prix at the moment there as we dip down into the 33.6s. What time is Verstappen going to set those, surely? Sorry, 33.8 even, I should say for us. Verstappen's probably going to be down in towards the mid to low 33s. There we go, 33.4. As now one of the Haas cars, Mick Schumacher, jumps out of the way. Stroll, though, not too far. We're leading our teammate by 47.5 seconds. Okay, Pierre has not had a fun day out of it so far, but yeah, we're still leading the way though. 16 seconds clear. It's not going to be the pace, I think, that helps them close up. It's going to be all about this control electronics wear, because it is getting worse and worse. The best way to reduce damage on your control electronics is drain the battery. But, of course, this car is so efficient on its Duracells, we can't even do that very well. Look at that, it's now ticked over 90%. 
So where I've lost about a percent in about a half a lap here. Oh, it's not looking good. It is really not looking good. There we go. The warning lights come on. On the control electronics. Oh, please, car. We need this. This is definitely championship defining kind of stuff. Stappen goes even faster. Stroll goes faster than Max. Never thought I'd say that in Formula 1. Max Verstappen versus Lance Stroll in a battle which could, if we drop out, be for the race win. You're doing well out there. Keep it up. We're looking at about 10 more minutes of rain. 10 minutes. There we go. Team now saying the rain might not last right to the end of this Grand Prix there. But we're in such a weird position. We're now trying to drain the battery. So the control electronics doesn't take as much stress here. Up to 93% though, with 8 laps to go. It is not looking good at the moment, but we've just got to try and keep at it. I don't know what else to do. I think avoiding curbs might be a good way to help as well. I guess we'll have to try it. We can't do anything else at the moment. Avoid the curbs, Matt. Don't want to speak too soon here, but I think avoiding curbs is actually the key at the moment. First lap in a very, very long time where we haven't had a single percent of wear go onto the of control now, electronics. This lap. However, it does mean we're losing about a second and a half a lap to Max Verstappen as well there. So it might just be a case of trying to do this for a couple more laps. And then once we know we've got enough sort of percentage left in it, might have to just go back to attacking those curves. Seven laps to go. The gap effectively only eight seconds between myself and the Dutchman. We cannot afford to keep losing too much time. This is an absolute balancing act like nothing I've had before on a Formula One game. Okay, looks like some of those puddles are clearing. We're still on the right tyre for the time being, but we're not a million miles away from slick conditions. Jeff, I really don't need that added on to everything going on in this Grand Prix. I'm trying to keep the car off the curbs. I'm trying to balance the gaps to the cars behind. And now we might have to be trying to think about the tyres as well here as I head back through Maggots and Beckett's once more. We're still at 93, so this is clearly working far better than I ever thought. However, I'm worried now. As soon as I touch a curb... Why did the dash just move? Whenever the HUD moves, normally there's something going on, but yeah, we're just monitoring it as best as possible. I think it was just a momentary scare by the team. Six laps to go. Six percent left in it. The gap, seven seconds. The turbocharger is on its last legs. Let's try to keep mileage on it to a minimum. And how am I supposed to do that? Oh, Verstappen, please stop setting fastest lap, mates. I don't know why Stroll, whenever he seems to go quicker, is reassuring for me. But, yeah, neither of them are working at the moment. We've got yellow flags out, though, in Sector 1. Who's got issues? I think Verstappen. Verstappen's going slowly here, I think. Is Max Verstappen? We've been so worried about our reliability. No. No, he's not. It's Lance Stroll out of the British Grand Prix there. Heartbreak for Mercedes, but not what I needed. Yeah, gutted for Stroll, because that could have been a really good podium for him, but how dramatic would that have been between myself and Max? Gap now, six seconds. I think, to be honest, as the track's slowly starting to dry, it's actually coming back towards me just a little bit, where we've just got less tread on our intermediate tyres there. It's a bit like Turkey 2020, where the tyres kind of start to fade and sort of scrub out a bit more. Maybe we're creating yeah, some slick intermediates on the wagon at the moment. But four laps to go. The gap now five seconds between myself and Max. And we've got 5% left on those control electronics. I'm so happy, however, that I remembered about the curbs. But we're having to use more of them again now just to keep that gap. This is... If we win this, this I genuinely believe will be the best race I've ever won on an F1 game from a strategic point of view. Four laps of fuel remaining. Oh, we're just using a bit too much curb there. It's ticked back up 97. Now with three laps to go. Let's look at that. Verstappen still finding more and more time in the car as well. Honestly, this feels like Kimi Raikkonen at the 2005 Nürburgring race where he had that puncture start in the final lap. We need this to stay in the championship fight in the same way Kimi Raikkonen needed that race victory 
to try and put a stop to Fernando Alonso's charge, but Verstappen is Alonso like in this situation. In about five minutes. Team saying weather's going to dry up in about five minutes. We, however, just desperately are trying to hang on here. It's not going to get dry before the end of this event. But come on, we've got to try and do something. Gap to teammate behind is 42.9 seconds. Oh, Verstappen, no, the fastest lap, though, as we've got a little bit left extra in the percentage now. But the gap, one and a half seconds with just two laps to go of the British Grand Prix. I think we're going to have to start taking curbs again as we run a little bit wide out onto the Wellington Straight there. And there we go. That's how close it is still on the percentage side of things. But Verstappen, he's obviously shredded his tyres trying to close back up to me. These are so tense laps here at Silverstone. We went green through the first sector though, so we clearly haven't lost everything in the car just yet. Is the engine smoking though? Yes, it is. Oh, oh, oh no, what is going to happen? It is anyone's guess still late on in the day here at the British Grand Prix. We can absolutely not afford for the engine to go. I don't care. Perez has got issues as well, so clearly reliability has been a big, big talking point from this Grand Prix. But the stop and the gap now, one second as we get close to starting the final lap then of the British Grand Prix. Are we going to see that engine control electronics tick over to 100? I think we've just got to start taking risks here. You know, I think, yeah, if we win this, we take home the whole points. If we don't, we're probably going to walk away with absolutely nothing here as we start the last lap of the British Grand Prix. And look at that, 99. We set a new personal best, though, at this stage of the day. And I think now we're going to have to take all the risks. We've got one second the gap to Verstappen. He's starting to struggle as well, though, on his tyres. We've got Nikita Mazepin just up the road in front of us. Who is going to win the British Grand Prix here as we try and head out of the loop? We need to try and nail this final lap as best as possible. They're still trying to avoid some curbs where we can, but having to attack them on places as well. Though, you know, if we would normally overcorrect to avoid a curb, no longer going to be doing that on the final lap of this Grand Prix. Seven tenths now. The gap between myself and Max Verstappen there as we try and put the power down. Mazepin, I beg, please get out of the way. Thank you very much, Nikita, for once showing some awareness of his surroundings in a Formula 1 Grand Prix there. But you can just see that's the corner where Verstappen often gains so much on me as we head through Maggots and Beckett's for the final time in this British Grand Prix. Having to attack the curbs. Please don't tick over to 100 there. But look at the gap for Stappen. He's closing the gap down still. 3.1. Well, effectively nothing between us as we head towards the final few corners of the British Grand Prix. I need to concentrate through these final couple of corners there. The control electronics hits 100 as well. Who's going to take the win here at the British Grand Prix? Is it going to be myself? Is it going to be Max Verstappen? Attack the curbs. Final corners up towards the line. Who's it going to be? Full throttle. Top job, my friend. Top job. I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend, but you pulled through. Thank you. Here we are then, a fantastic British Grand Prix, and what a performance it was from our race winners today. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win.
Today's performance means Max Verstappen now owns the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Now, let's discuss, Ant. Who would you say is a contender for Driver of the Day? Charles Leclerc showed exactly how to manage yourself out on the track today. He was almost flawless out there. Incredible stuff. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. Red Bull take over as championship leaders. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Absolutely heartbroken with that at the finish there. Less than a tenth of a second, the gap between myself and Max Verstappen when all is said and done. But it is the Dutchman that takes home the win at the British Grand Prix. Not too sure, to be honest, whether we lost much time trying to put the power down out of the final corner there. It certainly didn't gain us anything. But like I said, I think with just the wheel spin, you know, we were able to get a bit more oomph out of the corner. But then, of course, the spin across the line ultimately... We'll probably never know here. But Max Verstappen takes home yet another race victory in this career mode. And yeah, with that, takes the lead in the Drivers' Championship as well. We come through for P2 ahead of Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez there. But yeah, definitely the tensest finish I've ever had to a Formula 1 race on this channel. Bottas in P5 ahead of Sonoda, Norris, Sainz, Ricardo, and Gasly rounding out the top 10. But when you consider the pace early on, to be honest there, yeah, I think 18 points we can walk away pretty happy with that result there. There's your final race results. Just that stroll not making it to the checkered flag. Does mean, championship-wise, it's all square at the top between myself and Max Verstappen. But he does take the lead by virtue of more race victories there. Sergio Perez now with a 16-point uh, lead, sorry, over Pierre Gasly there. Gasly has just had no luck in the last couple of race weekends there. Charles Leclerc jumps his teammate. Bottas jumps Jack Aitken, though, in the championship as well there. And you can see Christian Lungard jumps George Russell on count back. Uh, yeah, constructors-wise, of course, with that gap, 16 points now at the top of the standings. Mercedes now just 17 points ahead of Ferrari, a bit further down the order as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you have enjoyed it, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. Gutted with that one though. But yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with more Formula 1 content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.